I hope everybody enjoyed the first talk. And uh, moving on to what we have in store for you next. Before I introduce the next speaker, can I ask everybody to please close their eyes for a moment? Go on, go on. Close your eyes. And uh, think of Kim Kardashian. All right. So you had your moment. OK, that's all. Come back. All right. So I'll tell you why I speak about this uh, lady. Our next speaker has something in common with her. John, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Both of them broke the internet with what they did. That's how I'd like to put it. So let me with that welcome on stage a wonderful person, a brilliant speaker, and a great entertainer, John Yao from StarkPhoto.com. John, uh, I have a question which everybody actually wants to ask. And uh, the question is, what were you thinking? Let me leave you with that. And uh, the stage is over to you. Thank you. All the best. Is this on? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah? No? Now, now OK. Namaste, everybody. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I, think, I think Manmeet must hate me, because um, he's always given me the, uh, the, the second sort of presentation straight after like a, a, a keynote like from Mr. Gupta. So I'm not going to ask you to uh, clap or cheer. I'm just going to ask you not to fall asleep. Let's give him a round of applause for that, guys. Come on. Um, just as a background, I, um, I, I bootstrapped stockphoto.com three years ago. Um, it's, uh, I'll give you a quick update as to where we are now. We're, uh, we've, it's, a, it's an e-commerce store uh, with 47 million uh, photos and vectors for sale. We have uh, 25 direct relationships with uh, photographs, uh, one wholesale provider, and our mailing list is about 12,000. Now, um, Manmin asked me to come and have a, have a chat to you guys today to give a perspective on the other side of the coin. So I know a lot of you guys are um, domain investors or flippers or affiliate marketers and content marketers. Um, I, I come from a, um, a domain parking background, but um, I don't know whether you guys remember 10, 12 years ago, um, there were guys called Monty Khan and um, uh, Mark Ostrovsky, and they used to have this podcast. and. Uh, used to get all these people in and, um, and, and you know, domain is much like yourself and they'd go and talk about, obviously, you know, the, the big, you know, uh, transactions that the industry were going through, you know, the dot-coms, the business.com, sex.com, et cetera. And I remember they always have interesting guests on these podcasts and all these guests, such as Brian Null, they'd go and buy these generic domain names and, and develop them. And so it's sort of, um, I was, I used to download all these podcasts and uh, listen to them on the way home to, you know, on the way to work and home. I think after a couple of years of doing that, you sort of, you know, something gets planted in your, in your psyche, and, you th and I think, I thought, I think I'd like to do that one day. And so um, I went out and bought a domain name. And where we are now is uh, we're three years down the track. Um, I bootstrapped it, so for a while there I was a part-time sole founder. Um, but now I've brought on uh, two separate co-founders. I'm still working full-time on it, but those two other guys are sort of part-time. Uh, I've set up a, an advisory board. He's a GM at Redbubble. I don't know whether you guys know them. He's a, it's a marketplace, uh, and again, an Australian marketplace. They sell uh, creative content so uh, that you, you know, buy on print or you know, uh, uh, canvases and stuff. Um, and thankfully, we make a small monthly profit and we're cash flow positive. So what I was hoping to do today was just to give you a perspective uh, of what happens and what we did uh, once I purchased the domain name uh, and developed and all the way through to where it is now in terms of a, a fully-fledged e-commerce store. And perhaps, just share my experience. Again, I've always uh, sort of uh, declared that I'm not an expert, uh, but I'm more than happy to share, I guess, my experience with you and what we did, what worked, um, but what didn't, I guess, that was the, uh, the main sort of things. So just to give you a quick background, I'm, uh, I'm a 46-year-old Australian. I know I don't look Australian, but I am. No, you don't look 46, actually. <laughs> Uh, I was born in Singapore and I migrated to Australia uh, when I was quite a young, young child. Grew up, studied there. Um, you know, I'm not from a rich family. I don't have millions of dollars like those other Chinese. Um, we, you know, comfortable middle class, you know, nothing, nothing fancy, you know, house, two kids, not even a dog. Uh, I've got an accounting background. I'm a qualified CPA and uh, I was a banker in another life. Um, I remember... Um, I won't talk about that. That's quite boring. But um, uh, in these jobs, basically, 
you know, like as you guys are, you, know, you the worst thing that can happen is actually you're quite good at your job, because what happens then is they give you more work, and and so that that's what happened to me. And I guess out of frustration, I always look for a little sort of side projects to keep me, I guess, you know, interested and refreshed. And uh, back in '97, '96, uh, I started dabbling in you know on the web, obviously, because it was the in the run up to the dot com boom or bust at that stage. And so everything, you know, all his money was flowing in VC funding, uh, listings, you know, pets.bats.com, I think it was, Paul, is that right? Going crazy back then. So I thought, oh, I better get into this web stuff. And so I uh, started dabbling and I, I, I launched, a, uh, you know, hopped on and got, got a hosting account and, uh, and started playing around. And I, I thought, oh, I could, I could launch a website and see how it goes. I might make a few dollars on the side. So what I did was I launched a... Um, a website about what I knew, uh, um, which was uh, um, a, a little product, a little business intelligence product, a data warehousing product called Cognos, which is, I believe, still around, and IBM own it. And basically, what it was was just a, um, a user forum. The, the forum they had wasn't very good and wasn't very sort of uh, well trafficked, and so I could never get any sort of answers to the work questions that I had. So I thought I'd launch one to compete with them. And uh, um, as you do, you you know launch, you do the uh, instant install, and you, I think I picked an open source package called Simple Machines, put a generic theme on and stuff. Um, it was all great, hit the launch button, and we're in production. No one came. I was like, why not? You know, so search Google, yes, we're being fired and stuff, but no one, no one came. And I think I learned then that the, that the real problem of the internet isn't how to launch a website, it actually is about the traffic. How do you get people to come in? have a look at what you want to sell or show or educate with, and then maybe stay and maybe share. And so I eventually sold off that, uh, that website to a Chicago-based um, consultancy. And uh, from that experience, I thought, oh, look, I think traffic's really where I need to be at and the marketing end. And so I, I, uh, I turned 40 a couple of years ago, and I sat down and I thought, look, you know, if I'm going to be serious about this, I've got to, I've got to do this web starter before I die. And so I sat down, and I, I, I charted out a couple of requirements. Uh, what would I do on this side business or this business? And I wanted to basically retain a lifestyle business or create a lifestyle business. I, wanted, uh, I didn't want to, to um, have something too onerous, you know, have to look for funding to, to get off the ground. And so I sort of you know, um, found my way into the domain space. It seemed quite a, you know, kind of obvious, really. It's, it's a building block with the internet. You, know, you either code, you either design, or you trade domain names, basically. And so um, nothing much happened after I you know, came up with this requirement. So I sat around and you know, checked out DN Forum and went on CEDO and uh, had a bit of a play around. Um, um, but one day, a friend, a friend of mine sent me an email and said, hey, uh, did you see that, that new domain that got listed on Flipper? And I thought, oh, what's that? He goes, oh, stockfoto.com. I was like, wow, that's a great name. How much is it asking for? $250,000 like US dollars, not rupees. And so uh, I thought, don't worry about that. I can't afford it. I, I don't you know, deal in that sort of figures. But I went away and I thought about it and I checked against, I guess, my requirements, you know, a digital product. You know, um, so I wouldn't have to worry about offline logistics and warehouses and delivery and customer support. Uh, it's a pretty simple business, you know, unlike maybe even logo design. There's no follow-up. You know, people search. People find, and if they like it, they buy it, they download it, end of story. And if you're lucky, they might come back. And so I really started looking at this, and I thought, well, uh, it actually fits the bill. So I went away, and I, I put down, look, what are the questions I need to answer? Well, what questions do I need to ask before I went away and pulled the trigger on this sort of thing? With most businesses, domains, online, offline, I think the questions that I came up with was, look, if I... What, what would you sell? How much, or how could you sell it, and how much could you charge for it? Question number one. And then if you can answer that question, uh, how much can I afford to spend to get to that point? And I, and I mean from a building it point of view, as well as an operating, because it's one thing to, to you know, project manage it, construct it, but if it costs you, you know, if you need 150 staff to run it, well, it, I, can't, I can't handle it. I can't fund that sort of stuff. And then... Um, how can I find ways around it to, to make sure I can achieve these requirements and not either spend a lot of money or have me actually doing the customer support? So, just walk through some of the, uh, 
uh, the, uh, the alternative. So I had stockphoto.com. The, the auction was going to, I guess, uh, expire in about a month. And so I went through and I thought, if I had stockphoto.com, what could I do with it? Uh, and so I came up with these four sort of alternatives. I could park it. I could sell it you know, using AdSense. Uh, you know, sign up with Botus. Sorry, I apologize. See, those not up there, but it should be. Uh, obviously, Google AdSense. Uh, I could run perhaps an affiliate site with it uh, and try and compete. You know, Shutterstock had an affiliate program. I could basically be a reseller for them. Uh, and obviously, maybe even look at link share or commission junction. Uh, or I could try and build a two sided marketplace, much like an eBay or photos. So, multiple providers or suppliers, like photographers and you know, videographers, etc and then possibly many buyers and basically be the middleman. Uh, much like Shutterstock, they're, they're a two-sided marketplace. Um, the last one I looked at was a software as a service. Um, could I perhaps position stock photo as a, uh, perhaps a, a web host? I'd sell you know, disk space, for example. You know, could I position myself such as a, like a Dropbox? Basically, you have AWS in the back end, and you're, you're basically um, uh, creating a, a software service to say, okay, hey, you can buy a website off us, or rent a website off us, upload your photos, and I'll help you, you know, sell to the end user. Uh, and this is what I came up with. Uh, these numbers are just sort of rough, and I guess for illustration purposes. Uh, domain parking AdSense, uh, and I guess the affiliate option, they were kind of the low complexity, low risk. Because you could pretty much, you know, as soon as your name server is resolved, you can pretty much slap a WordPress or WordPress site on it, or have a redirect. And you pretty much hit the ground running. You, 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 know, you start earning straight away. As long as your, your you know, estimated revenue from parking on affiliates were slightly higher than your web hosting costs, you're in the black. Uh, and you're not sitting around waiting for your developers to come back to you. You can pretty much launch straight away. Um, marketplace, e-commerce store, a little bit higher complexity. Uh, and software as a service, depending on what you were going to do with it, was going to be even higher complexity and possibly uh, many sort of potential breakpoints uh, and, and you know, areas to fall down in. And, and I, I think the estimated profits sort of reflect that. So if you look at it, you know, uh, domain parking, uh, you know, maybe uh, for a certain level of visitors a month, you might get a 10% click rate. So 100 people come, 10 people click on a link. And when they click on a link, you get a cut of that advertising revenue. Yeah? Affiliates, they might have a lower conversion rate or click rate depending on what you're selling, but it might have a higher uh, cost per action. So a $5 one. So you can see, you know, it's a slightly different pitch, but you know, it, it's slowly moving up the, uh, up, the, up the chain in terms of uh, revenue potential. Um, marketplace e-commerce, again, depending on you know, your, your positioning, your, your you know, user experience, and, and all that sort of stuff, is a, it's a function of your estimated uh, est visitors, a conversion rate, a checkout value, so, you know, 10 photos or $12 each, et cetera, times the margin, so your cut of that gross. And then software as a service, uh, I'm not sure if is here, but um, uh, again, depends on, I guess, the, the target market. So, whoops, before I go there. So, the constant in all that is the first bit. How many visitors do you think you will get? Yeah? How many things, how many, you know, all that sort of stuff are, are levers you can diddle with. But at the end of the day, it's the traffic. The traffic counts. Back in my day, when, uh, when I was doing some domain parking, I used to rely on compete.com. They had this fantastic, fantastic free service um, that gave you estimates of potential traffic. And, and dare I say, when I looked at stockphoto.com, I think, fantastic, they're going to come. It's a generic domain name, or, you know, two-word generic. People are going to come to stockphoto.com thinking they've gone to iStockphoto or iStockphoto.com. So my guess was there was always going to be a, a latent level of traffic even before any sort of SEO or paid traffic or link building and stuff. And I was using Compete back then to, to sort of guess how much this domain name might bring in terms of traffic and then obviously have a bit of a play on Excel to see, you know, well, how much return on investment can I expect if I had, you know, actually jumped in. And that's how I sort of arrived uh, at actually buying it at 250000 Obviously, I had a few hurdles, had to convince the wife and everything. But uh, effectively, that was my methodology. So what did we choose? So I guess the strategy is, you know, in, in any sort of oh, transaction cycle, I always found, I always thought my hypothesis, 
the hardest part is the marketing part, isn't it? Because whether you're engineering building bridges, you're farming, etc., the fulfillment and the operation part, you, you can sort of, there's a, there's a degree of um, uh, repeatability. There's, there's logic that you can repeat. You know, plant, you know, leave it for six, six months, water, sow, reap, boom, you're gone. The hardest part is actually the marketing, isn't it? So, i.e., my, my learnings from the first website. So you can build the best farm, the best factory, have the best you know, uh, engineering, but at the end of the day, it's, it's how do you get that first guy to come in and look at your product, and then and that, that's before you even try and convert them into a customer, let alone recurring customer. And so the strategy with, with uh, buying stockphoto.com, a generic domain name, is that I expected some traffic. And I thought that if I had a budget, why would I want to spend that money worrying about the production and fulfillment part of the operation when the hardest, or the biggest risk as a business person is actually the marketing part? And so if you're going to allocate $250,000, why would you allocate it you know, for a developer or a, you know, a product manager or a designer, no offense, but because the hardest part of that transaction cycle is actually the, the, the prospecting part. And so that's how I reasoned it to my wife. And, uh, uh, and so I blew the 250000 on a domain name, and we ended up going with an e-commerce business model. Um, so I went out. After spending $250,000, I, I didn't have a lot of change left. I spent $300 on a clone script, basically slapped an e-commerce store on it. Actually, it was less than $300 because I had a promo code. And uh, I reasoned that, hey, if I had a, had a, had a you know, X thousand of visitors per month, you know, they can come, they can see the worst store in the world, I might, my shelves might be empty for that month. But then when I fill it up the following month, they might have something to buy. You know, and, so, and so I'll share some stats with you. The um, eventually, um, uh, sorry, actually, I'll, I'll show this stat with you afterwards. So, so I went with the lamp stack. So I didn't have a lot of money left. So the only option to me to, to after I spent all that money was to do the production stuff on the cheap, i.e. build a warehouse on the cheap. How do you do it? Do it open source. It's all free. Uh, cheap hosting. You know, I picked a, you know, a lamp stack, a PHP platform. Stacks of freelancers, freelancers that can you know, help with, with development. So there were plentiful supply, they were you know, fluent in the, in the platform, wouldn't be too hard to get it up and running. Um, and uh, on the back end side, so the, the processes, building the platform, you still had to have manual processes at the back end supporting your operation. So what I do is I said, well, I'm not going to be a Shutterstock from day one. I'm going to be a semi sort of affiliate sort of thing. I, I, all my back end processes have to be cheap. So I uh, designed the business so that I'd have minimal offline processes. So I wouldn't have any image curation processes. I had minimal uh, customer support sort of uh, processes. And that was the only way I thought I could survive and get to the next, you know, the domain name, $300 e-commerce strip, got me to first base. Uh, how I was going to make my, my way around the diamond and hopefully hit a run was just to lie and cheat and fake it till I make it with open source. So what do we do first? The uh, domain name settled uh, in January 2013. And the first thing I did, even before I put uh, Google Analytics on, was to slap a, a MailChimp sign-up page on it. Because uh, you should always work on building your list from day one, right? And so uh, just a, you know, easy, you know, straight up, uh, nothing too fancy, just a form. Uh, please give us your email address. We're about to launch soon. Uh, we actually collected about 10,000 subscribers in six months. No promises, no, you know, no, by the way, we're going to disrupt this uh, stock photo industry world. Please give us an email. It was just, please sign up. We should be launching soon, I think. People signed up. Um, and then I slapped the Google Analytics on, and thankfully, actual traffic was greater than the compete estimate, which is why I'm here. Uh, I won't bore you with the others. Um, I spent some money then. Um, I, I got all romantic with the domain name. Could have just launched pretty much on day three, but I, I got a bit sort of um, uh, romantic with it and got, got a bit smart. And I blew another 15000 on a web designer um, for work that probably didn't need to be done. I could have saved that 15000 and just launched with it. Uh, and so what I didn't do was raise funding. I didn't have a business plan. I had a financial plan, a very rough, you know, as you saw on slide three, just a very rough estimated traffic conversion rate, you know, et cetera. 
I didn't design a logo. I didn't run premises. I didn't rush out and find a technical co-founder. I certainly didn't buy uh, any traffic. I didn't hang out at a local co-working space or go to meetups or socialize. I figured, I've got nothing to show for it. Might as well just go ahead and do it first, launch. And if it actually works, then talk about it, which is, I guess, why I'm here. Uh, I didn't network with other startups, and I didn't, certainly didn't go and design an app, which at that point was very, very fashionable. And I certainly didn't go and worry about making it scalable and working on the, the newest JavaScript library and using it and trying to architect it in. I didn't build the back end to scale. It was sitting on a dedicated you know, server, probably going to fall over, and it did a couple of times. But I guess my message to you was well, I didn't wait until everything was perfect. The benefit of having a generic domain name with type in traffic is that you can make as many mistakes as you want. You know, you just won't get customers. But the thing is, you'll always get customers the next month. And if you actually convert a couple of those customers and they're on your client database, well, then you can do all your other stuff like content marketing and email marketing and stuff and hopefully you sell them the stuff that you know, you've put, just put on your, your shelf. You know, new images, new vectors, new illustrations, that sort of stuff. So we launched nine months after I bought the domain name. I managed to get a, a bit of seed content through a, um, a, a stock photo photographer, stock photographer, um, by the name of Sergey Nivens, which, who is uh, actually an industry superstar in stock photo circles. He was very kind. And um, uh, I was still part-time. I was working full-time at, uh, at my role. Um, and my first sale was the day after I launched for $50, and it was the best $50 I ever made. I nearly cried. In fact, I probably did. And so I'll just quickly share with you my definition of a North Star, and I'll try and wrap it. Um, look, you know, I'm, I'm a domainer like you guys. I'm, I'm not a, one of the startup, you know, um, purists. I'm not here to disrupt an industry. The, the stock photo industry is not broken enough for me to try and solve. I understand that. The best job that I can do with this particular business is actually just to do what the leader's doing. If I can actually come 80% of what he's doing, I'm happy. I'm a clone. So we can actually duplicate or mimic their inventory size, their uh, you know, range of licenses, the quality, their media types. Uh, basically, I'm happy. My job's done. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, um, if we can actually do some learning along the way and, and do email marketing and content marketing, try and increase that order size and get that repeating business. Um, uh, but the challenge, even now with that domain name, is actually to increase traffic. Because that domain name, um, you know, the traffic levels out. It's very consistent throughout the whole year. Um, uh, but, you know, like, I think, I think the, the, the point is the domain name buys you time. Buys you time to sort of fake it through your back end, get it up and running. But then you get to a point where you actually have to flip it back the other way. You, you can't sort of rely solely on a domain name. That's not the thing to do, I don't think. So, oop, I won't worry about that. Um, my methodology. I don't know about that. That's not that good. My advice is, I know we're in a domain X convention, but you know, try and build a business. I'm a domain R, domain parking, you know, AdSense, all that stuff. It's great. I'm sure the cash flow is fantastic. You're making great ROI. Um, but if you take a decision to develop, build a business. Don't just develop a domain name. Understand that. And certainly don't fall in love with your domain name. You know, it's just a tool. It's a marketing tool. Solve the, important problem, uh, solve the important problems first. Uh, I know we, you know, a lot of solopreneurs here, we're not sort of well-heeled, uh, VC-funded sort of operations. You've got to prioritize. Um, look, I, first time in three years, I am actually not embarrassed about my website. You know, I didn't talk to anyone, didn't do any meetups, didn't, there's no need to talk about it until actually you have something to show or sales to, 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 to demonstrate. Why talk about it? Get back into your, you know, 12 hour job, you know, in front of that uh, computer and, and get it done. You know, yes, you win ugly, you'll get that uh, email saying, yep, your site's shit, you know, I can't find any photos. Yes, sir, you're absolutely right, but come back next month, it'd be better, was the approach that we took. Because you can't solve everything first. Not if you're trying to bootstrap it or you have a, a little runway in terms of funding. Uh, I encourage you to bootstrap it because I think take up the challenge of actually working with that constraint. I think you'd be better for it. I think the, the uh, you know, having a cash efficient business forces you to create what your customer wants. Okay? Uh, focus on making the sale. Don't worry about the back end. Don't worry about the stack. Don't worry about your JavaScript libraries. Don't worry about that. You know? 
not about fiddling with you know, the UX. It doesn't matter. Just focus on the sale. You know? And uh, once you've made up your mind to develop, don't get distracted. And project manage it if, you know, like you mean it. Now, I know you can't read this, so I'll read this to you. Now, um, beginner domainers should start with the end in mind. Domain names are marketing tools, tools to help gain, convert, and retain customers. Their value lies in their ability to do so and the value of those customers. Okay? If a domain name can do that, then it's worth something. Whatever it is. You know, a numeric idea, whatever. If it can do that for a high value product or service, then it's absolutely crucial to that business. Okay? Customers will change, tastes will change, and that's fine. That'll always happen. But, um, and, you know, and it's, it's, there's no right way of doing it. You can use a hybrid approach. You know, I, you know uh, who was it? Uh, was it Om that was asking me, why did you put your money into one domain, you know, pump all your money into one domain as opposed to maybe split your money up and do 20 domains and split the risk? Well, I, my, my answer to that is absolutely right. I'm an accountant. That's portfolio theory. That makes sense to me. But my rationale is that, but the approach doesn't change. How you assess that opportunity doesn't change. So whether it be one or 20 domain names, it's the same thing. So don't forget, though, that the end users, only end users, end users only buy domain names if they're sure they can get at least the same amount of value back. Okay? If you're working on gut feel, and if you know, DN Journal, the, you know, the sale lists are your only guide, then you really need to get some help. You know? And so I recommend domaininsider.in. Uh, and I'd like to thank Gaurav and Mummy for having me, uh, and my throw to questions. Thank you, John. And here's uh, congratulating you and wishing you the very best for a lot more of those $50 moments. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, John, uh, before I open up the uh, stage for questions from the audience, tell me something. You're selling somebody else's product. You're actually, uh, like you said, you opted for digital products because you yep. wouldn't have to warehouse, create the product, yep. etc. So you're essentially depending upon supply from someone else yep. in stock photography, right? Yep. How was it working with partners? How did you convince them to uh, supply you with uh, photographs? And how did you uh, basically rope them in? Yeah. How do you get them on board? Hey, that, that domain name really helps. It, uh, I remember Brian Null bought golfcourses.com and I, one of the podcasts, he actually said, oh, can you hear? Yep, Brian Null had golfcourses.com in one of the podcasts that I referred to at Webmaster Radio. He actually said, look, no one knows me, but I had this name. And when I emailed them and I made contact with them, they said, who's this guy with this domain name? And so you might not convert that uh, customer or that investor or that uh, affiliate relationship, uh, but you certainly get them looking. And I guess that's how I found, firstly, my co-founder and also the uh, photographers. Um, you know, I'll let you on a little secret. You know, I, a week ago, we decided to do away with the 25 photographers, uh, as, as great as they are, um, and we're going to go with uh, the one wholesale provider for, for a little time because it's much more efficient. I don't, I don't have to do commission runs. I don't have to you know, support them. I don't have to contact them. I don't have to answer the questions like, well, gee, sales this month hasn't been very good for you. And so it buys me a little bit of time to get to the next stage to say, actually, we're making enough money now that I can maybe look at having you know, a two-sided marketplace and building these processes to support you know, uh, photographers, you know, high volume users, agencies, etc. But you know, my point, you know, I, I don't mind winning ugly. I don't mind having a customer tell me, look, your website's shit. I didn't get what I want. I wasted all my time. I want my money back. I'm happy to refund it, no questions asked, because I know what my end point is. You know, I've defined a critical path. You know, it doesn't matter how you get to the playoff, right, Paul? You know, it doesn't matter how you get to the NBA. As long as the NBA playoffs, you get a chance to finish with the ring. And that's uh, hopefully what I'm doing. Thanks, Sean. Is anybody else here who has... Oh, you guys didn't even let me finish. Wonderful. Be gentle. <laughs> Hi, John. Firstly, I'd like to co congratulate you for a $250,000... Uh, $250, congratulate or commiserate? Purchase. So, I'd like to... No. What were you thinking and what was in your mind during the last probably one hour or maybe just before you click the buy now? Right. Uh, I got really drunk. 
<laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's not a lie, because, um, yeah, yeah, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, blazing saddles, but I shoot with this hand. Um, uh, it was Christmas Eve, and I knew that the bite now was coming up, the bite now, I'm uh, sorry, the, uh, the expiry was actually Boxing Day, the 26th, and uh, I thought about it, I got, I got the clearance from the wife, uh, and basically it was literally waiting for that bite. All right, buy it, buy it now price. And so I knew I was obviously going to hit the buy it now button. So uh, I tried it a couple of times. Actually, before Christmas Eve, I was close. I couldn't do it. So I went out, had a few drinks, came back, had a shower, bam, <laughs> and went straight to sleep. Not my proudest moment. Yes, Paul. Great speech, Sean. Excellent. Thank you. Um, just a question for you in regards to the uh, analytics traffic. Were you aware of how much traffic, uh, type in traffic, you were receiving to the site prior to buying it? Yes. Uh, great question. I, I was at BlogX. It was a slightly different uh, presentation. The, um, the stats I can share with you was um, I compete was half what I actually got in the end. Compete estimated a certain level of traffic, and I actually got double that. Uh, 75% was direct navigation, um, and obviously, you know, being direct navigation, you know, bugger all recurring. Um, uh, I think it was two thirds was US based, and the rest was split between Germany, Netherlands, UK, and Brazil. So I really have to work on the Indian traffic, I think. Um, uh, the funny thing was with the stats, though. Uh, again, I don't mind sharing, is that um, the number of people that actually, so, you know, you get Google Analytics, you see the dashboard, you see the traffic numbers, you see the acquisition channels, and I had a bunch of um, uh, traffic coming in from, from search engines, Google, and what I found was I wasn't in Google, because I hadn't done any SEO, it didn't, you know, stock photo actually until maybe four weeks ago, didn't have a sitemap, you know, we, we, all our micro formats were completely wrong, or didn't have any. And um, what people were doing were actually typing stockphoto.com into the search bar and then somehow finding an old link somewhere and then finding me. And so, you know, yeah, the, the bulk of the traffic was, was that and direct navigation. And just second question is with these new GTLDs that are released, uh, .photo and .photos, yep. is there any interest to, to kind of to get well, stock .photo? Or my something? constraint is I've run out of money that my wife would give me. Um, but um, I'm hoping, I'm a... I'm a follower of the old you know, Rick Schwartz school of thought in the sense that uh, uh, for, for a little while uh, longer, um, dot .com will still be the reserve extension um, and that anyone that might want to develop you know, stock dot .photos as a, as a, as a you know, URL might actually end up at stockphoto.com for a little while. Um, and uh, yeah, there's no interest there at the, at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think I've, I think I've blown on my cash and uh, I don't think my, my wife trusts me anymore to go anywhere near Flipper. Hey, hey, John. Uh, good, good morning. Morning. Uh, actually, you said you grabbed 10,000 emails in six months, right? I'm sorry? You, uh, before the launch, you grabbed 10,000 emails in six months, right? Yes, yes, that's right. I, that's, I was that's going that's to ask, yep. how exactly did you do it? I mean, uh, you have not even launched. No one knows you. Was it only because the domain was so perfect or you had a uh, traffic uh, strategy or something? Because 10,000 is like really great for something that has not even been launched. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can tell me how exactly you grabbed the traffic. My, look, my, my premise was that, you know, I'm in India. You know, the guys at, at BlogX, you know, as I said it there, look, you users don't care about you. The Americans don't care about you. You know, the, the, the Europeans don't care about you. Well, they don't care, but they don't know you. Yeah? And so what do we do as the outsider? You know? Yes, we're a rising star in terms of the tech industry. You know, you know, you just need to go out, you know, outside to see the amount of uh, tech-related, you know, industry around here. Australia, not so much. But how do you how do you make something from nothing? How do you how do you how does David beat Goliath? And so, you know, you might sort of be shocked at the amount. Yes, two hundred and fifty is a large amount to spend on a domain name, but actually, it's quite small in terms of. You know, uh, you know you, you, I don't think you can start a business for 250. You know, you can't buy a Subway franchise for 250. Certainly, you know, working capital loans should be about 250. But 
And so 250, you know, the, the domain name is actually a, a very important um, slingshot that I think we can use to get global acceptance, global customers. You know, we um, have a favorable exchange rate with, you know, our trained customers in the U.S. and Europe. And uh, I, you know, I assume that that will stay the same for a while. And so, you know, be it a, stock, you know, a domain name and um, a, uh, be it using open source, I think it's really important as domainers to understand that, look, you, you specialize in one sliver of it, you know, in one of those building blocks. And it's great, but, you know, if you're ever tempted to actually build a business or if you want to put yourselves in your end users, potential purchasers' uh, shoes, you actually have to understand that, well, hey, I've got domain name, I've got back end, I've got human processes that I've got to support, I've got funding issues. You know, these are just hacks. You know, we really have to try and, you know, uh, find a way to get something from nothing or something from very little. Because that's the only way you can catch up. If you do exactly, you know, money ball, if you do exactly the same as the Giants, you lose every time. You've got you've to find something different. And uh, at a personal level, you know, look, uh, you know, software is not my only thing. We've taken care of as much as we can our financial situation. This is my midlife crisis. This is my masterpiece. I'm happy to put my name on it. I'm happy to speak to you. I'm happy to, you know, show you how much of an idiot I am in, on a world stage, on an Indian stage. Um, so, but the, but the, the main thing is, you know, it, it's a hack, but it's only one hack. The, you know, I think success for us will be determined on how well we string all these little hacks together, because those things will only last for a little while, and we'll have to find new hacks. Just one, one last uh, short question. So you had nothing to do with any kind of paid traffic, Facebook ads, or uh, any kind of ads, right? If you, if you do a site search on Google right now, I think we only have 790,000 pages indexed, you know, versus 46 million. So absolutely bugger all. And I'm, you know, like if, if, you, uh, and if you did an image search, oh, I, I wouldn't think we'd be in the first 100 pages, to be honest. And so, all right. Uh, so I, I, as I, much as we'd like to see, I, John... Can I, can, I, can I ask a question? <laughs> well, I, I know I have that personal access that I can ask you any question, but then I just wanted to ask this question for every domain investor sitting here. Uh, we as a domain investor, what we do, buy a domain name and sit on it, uh, um, expecting offers or well, um, building that emotional touch by um, saying, uh, I'll build the site. I'll build something on it. So one by one, we... Uh, you know, keep registering names or acquiring names and build a portfolio of 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 names. We'll build this someday. As, as you said, um, wait, well, during your session, you said, um, well, do something with your domain name rather than sitting on it. Right. Um, as you said in one of your sessions, uh, one of your uh, uh, statements earlier, that do something with your um, 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 domain name rather than sitting on it and saying, um, you know, do something with it. So I just wanted to ask, uh, um, how, what advice would you give to all the domain investors sitting here uh, who have 5,000 or 10,000 domain names? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, just care for your wife a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that makes it easier, right? Yeah, first of all, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, the buy and hold strategy. I'm a buy and holder from a real estate perspective. You know, I, I think it's a very valid business model. You know, it's, a, it's an investment model. Uh, I, I think it's, it's important because it provides liquidity for the domain name market. You know, we need that liquidity. Otherwise, you know, the end users or the marketers you know, would have to end up paying for it. So I actually think, depending on what the manager is talking about, you know, it's a very important part of the ecosystem where you have that you know, flippers, long-term holds, you know, guys that experiment with AdSense, monetization, I think it's very important. You know, I, I, I have no problems with that. Um, I'm very specific with my pitch. My, I wanted to deal with the traffic domain. I couldn't have cared less if it wasn't a generic .com. All I cared about was the traffic. And so that was what I wanted to do. You know, uh, guys out here, certainly, you know, meeting Paul Singh, again, you know, the second time, looking at an amazing portfolio. These are very brandable, you know, domain names. And anyone that buys off him, will be getting it for a song against what their true worth is. Yes, some of them might need link building and traditional SEO or whatever, but it certainly closes the gap. Once they found him and they purchased from him, his recurring, his cost of uh, getting a repeat customer, very, very low, very low. 
And so, you know, I think I'll go back to that definition and domain insider dot in. You know, I, I think it really comes down, the value comes down to, you know, uh, attracting, converting, and then retaining that customer. Whatever your domain name. So if you, you hold two, that's fine. If you, if you can, you can if honestly done your research and you think it can convert and you can say, hey, what do you reckon it is? And says, someone says, yeah, hey, that's, that's pretty good. I think it's a good sort of litmus test, but I think it all comes down to this. Whether it's 5,000 or 30,000 with uh, our, our learned colleague, um, I, I don't think it really matters. Thanks, John. Thanks a lot for Thank you very much. sharing your secret sauce with us. And um, I think you've got a great set of entrepreneurial values, and that's something which uh, some of the audience here should take away today. Yeah, I'm, I'm a really bad public speaker, so please catch me outside of coffee, and I'm sure I'm better. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Anybody? You know when he buys $250,000 domain names, get him drunk first, OK? All right, last question, John. Are you taking back a picture of India to put up on stock photo? I've got many pictures of India up at home Wonderful. already. Wonderful. So. We look forward to seeing them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.